All right, so I wanted to kind of show off a bit of kit that I recently picked up. Um, I picked up this EEPROM programmer from eBay. It's from a, a um, electronics surplus reseller. They listed it as four parts, as is, all that kind of good stuff. Um, I'm sure they didn't have the means or inclination to really test it. So they put it up as is to kind of wash their hands of liability. But I took a chance on it because I did find the service manual and the manual for it online. So if it happened to work, um, I was in a good spot because I had the manual, which a lot of these that I'm seeing on eBay don't have the manual, like the M4000 series or whatever. I've seen a couple of those, but the manual is nowhere to be found. Uh, but this thing looked like it had sort of a cult following. Um, a lot of forums, people are talking about these things, and there's a great um, source for firmware and manuals online. So I picked it up and tested it out and it seems to be working so um everything i've tried has worked i mean there's been error here and there but like it's a very old piece of kit and i'm sure that's my not knowing what settings to choose and not the device itself so what i want to kind of do is just kind of do some programming to show what this thing can do it's a very fun bit of kit to work on so let's um i have a EEPROM that has data that's in here already and I'm just gonna load this um, make sure I have the right chip selected I do so let's just read this into the buffer and okay so that shows that it has read and let's actually see this in action um, this is my MMC development cart uh, for my NES. Just been um, programming a lot recently with the MMC mapper. It has a lot of features, so I made a dev cart for it. Um, basically just some animation with some bank switching and all the pulse channels playing at the same time just to hear that they all work because this cartridge will add a uh, Two extra sound channels that the that the NES doesn't have. So that is working and that's what we should see after we're done programming. So let's take this back over here. We will take the smaller chip out. This is 128 kilobytes just for the sake of programming time. The, the other one in here is 512. So we will put program chipped here and blank chip over here. So let's power this guy on finally. So it should be clearing the RAM. Um, this beautiful display, um, I, I love these sort of displays, almost like a vacuum fluorescent, um, like old calculators, all that kind of stuff. It just it has an awesome look to it and an awesome feel. So I'm really glad this, this era piece of equipment is something I have. Um, another thing I really love about this machine is the, the keypad. It's like this capacitive touch or resistive touch um, but you barely have to do any pressure at all and it has this satif satisfying like chirp um, inside here. There's a little beeper or speaker and every time you click a button it has a very satisfying feel. So, so it's a terrific machine in terms of how it feels and how it looks and obviously what it's capable of doing for me. So. It remembers the last device that you used, so that's why it's selected the correct chip. Um, but if you needed to select a different device, you would hit set zero, and you would be able to choose devices by manufacturer. So the up and down arrows changes the manufacturer. We're using AMD, and then the left and right will choose the different device. So I'm using a 27C010. And then you just exit and that's select the, the device. So let's put this thing in. This is the one with data in it. And um, usually when programming, you want to do a verify to see that the, um, the EEPROM is blank. So this one is not blank. So we should see an error when we try to verify that it's empty, which we do. Empty fail and it highlights the, the device that failed. Um, let's check the empty chip so we hit empty now the process that's currently happening is shown on screen there's no like 
spinning wheel progress bar or anything like that, but it is currently checking that that's empty and the active socket is shown in green. So it does take a little while. It is an old machine, mind you, but that's part of its charm and um, I can kind of live with that and it's not too terribly long. Um, okay, and it looks like it's finished and the part has passed. So this, this is empty. So what I want to try to do is I want to program this chip with the contents of this one. So let's, let's try that here. We'll put this one back. And what we want to now do is load the contents of the chip into the internal RAM of the programmer. So we're going to hit the load button and that's what this is going to be doing. So the current progress is shown on screen and the currently active socket is shown in green. And again, we'll let that do its thing. It's not going to be lightning fast, but fast enough for these small, relatively small EEPROMs. And for stuff like NES, they're not going to be very big anyway. If you're doing like an NROM cartridge, those are 32 kilobytes and so on. Okay, so it gives us a checksum. So 2738, that was the checksum that I've been getting over and over um, as I've been testing this. So that tells me that the internal RAM has been programmed with the data of this chip. So I'm going to set that to the side over here back on the MMC cartridge. And we could, we could put that in the slot and hit program and see if it does the business, but I, I like using this machine, so let's kind of see more about what it can do. And it can actually list out the RAM and it allows you to check the values. So um, you basically hit the list button and then you have your location, your address here, and then the value that's in the address. You can either step through the address one at a time um, or you can go up and down and it's going to increase this m more significant bit over here. Or if you have a specific address that you want to go to, um, you just, you type it in the keypad. So let me zero everything out first and then like 220, uh, there's nothing in that, but let's go to our ROM and actually find some data and see if it matches. So I have a bunch of FFs. I got some A's and some 5's, so let's try to find these. This address is 1A10, and it should be an A. So I'm going to zero that out. We got 1A10, and it is indeed an A, so that, that matches with what we have. The next one should be a 5. So I can hit the right arrow, and it shows me a 5, and that tells me that the um, the RAM is indeed correct with the, the data that was in that chip. So let's go ahead and exit this and let's actually try to program. So this is the blank one. I'm going to put that in there. And now there's a couple different programming settings that you could use with this. Now if you hit the set button and program, it, you can select what pre-programmed check you want to run. So if I select no check, it's going to instantly try to program the chip. If I hit empty, it'll check that the chip is empty before it tries to program. Or if we do a bit check, now I don't know exactly what this does, but from what the manual was saying, it sounds like it checks the device uh, in such a way to verify that it's capable of receiving the data that's in RAM. Like if you put a chip that's too small or something, it might fail that bit check. Um, for now, for the sake of time, I'm just going to put no check and we're going to try to program here. This is the only setting I've seen that actually does have a progress counter, which is nice. Um, I do like to see like activity happening on some these sort of um, programming steps. Just something happening on screen, letting me know that it's working and just to keep me entertained looking at it because I do love um, these displays they are really awesome and like I said I, I love this machine just how it looks how it feels and and what it's capable of so programming uh, again does take a while I don't know if this is any longer than those empty or verify checks it does seem to be a little bit longer um, just if I was to guess I haven't done too many programming um, on this yet so 
This should trudge through the status and we'll see where it takes us. I don't remember what number it got to last time um, or if another digit comes into play if it takes any longer than that. Um, but these numbers being in hexadecimal, that leftmost digit is only a one, so it would have um, taken a very long time for that digit to go higher than F. Right now it's in the verify stage, so it's finished programming, and now it's trying to verify with RAM to make sure it did a good job. So hopefully that verifies and passes. All right, part passed. So we've successfully programmed this chip. So let's take it out. Um, what I actually want to do now, just to kind of wrap this up, let's pop it in the cart, in the cartridge, and uh, make sure that it works. So this was the one that we had before. This was the master chip. I'm going to leave this over here. I'm going to take the one we just programmed. We will put it in the correct way here. And we'll take it over to the NES. Pop it down and moment of truth. Awesome. And it works. Awesome. So that was the Stag uh, PP42 programmer. Um, I hope to be using this thing um, in my NES antics. Um, I do make cartridges and I code for the NES so when I um, want to solder up all these guys and actually make some sort of release happen or make more of my previous release, I can put a master chip in here, load the RAM, um, and then program eight chips at a time for when I want to go program. Um, thanks for watching through all that. I hope it may have been helpful for somebody who maybe picked up this model and wants to just kind of know some of the features, but um, it's just an interesting relic from the past and it's a fun device to use.